So you want to start watching stardom, huh? Well, that's good, because I can help you. If you want to skip all my talking and get right into the mix, you can do so. There's a link in the description, a Google Sheet that I made that is kind of like a beginner guide for 2019 that'll get you literally from day zero to whatever you want to get to. Now, I guess the sheet will work for any year, but it's specifically made for 2019, so keep that in mind. I'm also not going to talk your ear off. I'm just going to give you the information you need, and then I'm going to let you kind of discover things on your own, because I think that's part of the fun of getting into stardom is kind of figuring things out for yourself, figuring out who your favorite stage is figuring out who your favorite person is and following along and things like that so what this video is it's going to be getting you on the right path so you can get started and get into the mix and then you can kind of go from there so stardom is a women's professional wrestling company over in japan the very first thing you're going to want to do is sign up on stardom world as this is stardom's equivalent to like a wwe network or an honor club or a new japan world stardom world only costs like 920 yen which is more or less like ten dollars a month this is pretty much the same price as most networks it's a little different than most federations you probably watch because stardom is dictated by four different factions everyone that's on the stardom roster is in one of these factions so let's go down the faction list we're going to start off with stars which is pretty much your just white meat baby face group mayu iwatani runs this group which you guys might have heard the name as she was one of the big three in stardom with io and kairi which are in the wwe now which is probably where you heard a lot about stardom from honestly in the first place so basically what stars is is stars wants to win their matches by following the rules they're literally the ultimate faces here like you're not going to see mayu low blowing people and, and hitting them with chairs and stuff she's going to try to win by just beating them and being nice and following the rules so you have stars on one end of the spectrum which is your super babyface group and then on the other end of the spectrum you have oedo tai which is your heel group i wouldn't say that oedo tai is an evil group i just think that they're kind of dicks oedo tai is headed by kagetsu if you haven't heard of kagetsu yet you will soon i promise you she's very talented she's one of the top people in stardom and she's actually one of the locker room leaders if not the locker room leader in stardom you know i was talking about how stars wants to win by following your rules and doing everything like that well oedo tai does not want to do that they want to mess with people and break the rules and beat people's asses and that's just kind of what they want to do I, like i said i wouldn't say they're an evil group they're just kind of like they're kind of almost like a comedy heel group you know i, I guess if you want to split them up a little bit you know, like people like kagetsu and hazuki they take it a little more serious than people like uh natsu sumire or uh or, or andras or people like that you can split the group almost there's like people that are more serious than the others and there's some that just aren't so queen's quest is the third faction in stardom which you might have heard of just because it was made by io shirai who is now in wb which i assume is one of the names that you've actually heard so queen's quest is another one of the factions and it was founded by io although io did find it of course she's in wwe now so queen's quest is headed by momo watanabe so queen's quest is interesting they're a tweener group i guess is the best way to put it they're not bad they're not good they're just kind of in between somewhere so basically queen's quest wants to win uh they're not afraid to get in your face and they want you to basically like the whole thing with queen's quest is bow down to the queen so the idea essentially is that they want you to recognize that they are the best and the last group is tokyo cyber squad which actually just got together out of kind of like the ashes of an old group called the international army which really wasn't i mean it was kind of a group but it really just wasn't you don't really need to know about that just worry about tokyo cyber squad now tokyo cyber squad is headed by hannah kimura which you might have heard of if you watched roh or any other she she had an excursion into mexico and then she went to the states for a little bit and you've probably heard her or seen her i've seen a lot of people on twitter she's very popular in the states especially compared to most of the rest of the roster most people have at least seen her i guess the best way to describe tokyo cyber squad is almost chaotic neutral um <laughs> they basically just want to disrupt the stardom status quo now that's just a really quick rundown of all the faction if you want to read more see more of course like i said the google sheet down in the description will help you with that but i thought i would just run them down just a little bit just so you guys can get a, a little bit of information on them one thing that stardom definitely has a lot of is championships they have seven different championships in stardom right now for a roster that's maybe 30 people it's it's quite a lot of championships so very quickly i will run down all the championships just so you have an idea of what each one is the very first championship is the world of stardom championship which is going to be your classic heavyweight singles title this belt is considered the top belt in the company and the person that holds it is usually considered the top person in the company you'll probably come to know this as the red belt as the two belts that are at the top are kind of classified by the colors you have the red belt which is the world of stardom championship and then you have the white belt which is the wonder of stardom championship and that's a pretty good segue because now i'm going to tell you about it the wonder of stardom championship is your secondary title so if you want to look at like new japan which has the iwgp heavyweight championship and the iwgp intercontinental championship but essentially it's your secondary belt now stardom has two different tag team championships which seems to be kind of the case with a bunch of companies nowadays you have the regular tag team championships which are called the goddess of stardom tag team championships what what did you just call it 
The what? The one more time. Goddess of Star. <laughs> Goddesses. Don't even watch the promotion. And then you have the six woman tag championships, which are gonna be called the Artists of Stardom Championships. Stardom has three different championships, which are kind of like mid card championships, but they all have gimmicks to them. So the first one is the high speed championship, which is meant for like your fast and high flying wrestlers. I don't wanna say it's a cruiserweight championship because there's not any weight classes in Stardom, but it's meant for like faster people. Like the current champion is Suzuki and people that usually challenge for it are like Starlight Kid and Izumi, which are like super fast, like, uh, smaller people. Stardom also has the SWA Championship, which you don't see very often. And, mo and mostly, you probably won't see it for a little bit of time if you start watching now because Utami is the champion and she's injured right now, so you probably won't see it too much. But the SWA Championship is essentially a belt that can only be defended against someone of a different nationality than you or from a different country than you're from. So let's say that uh, B. Prestuli was the champion. <laughs> then that means that pretty much anyone from Stardom could challenge her for the championship. But if let's, okay, let's just go with Utami since she's the champion right now. So let's say she's the champion, cause she is. She can only get challenged against people that are from different countries than Japan. And the last championship is the Future of Stardom Championship, which are for people in Stardom that are either less than 20 years old or have less than two years of wrestling experience. Also held by Utami. You're gonna notice real quick that she's, uh quite the specimen. So Stardom also has their yearly events. So you might have heard of the Cinderella tournament, which happened this year and it was a big debacle because we had the two guys jeans in the crowd that would not stop chanting. But the Cinderella tournament is a yearly single elimination one day tournament that they hold usually at Cork and Hall. And the winner of that tournament gets a wish and that wish is usually something you know, like, I challenge for the belt. Similar to the Cinderella tournament, but done a little bit differently is the five star Grand Prix, which is gonna be a round robin tournament where the winner of that usually gets a chance to challenge for a championship, which is usually the World of Stardom Championship. Another event they hold is a tag league, which is kind of similar to the New Japan Tag League and this is a round robin tournament and the winner usually faces for the Goddess of Stardom Tag Team Championships. I just talked to you earlier? You just don't pay attention. Goddesses of stardom. Why is that so difficult for you? And the very last thing they do is the rookie of stardom, which is kind of on the table. It could literally be anything depending on how many people that stardom got that year. But essentially it's a tournament or match or whatever to showcase the rookies of stardom that year. So people that are having like their first year in stardom. Now the difference between stardom world and like a new Japan world or a WWE network is stardom is still a small company. They don't do live shows. All of stardom shows are taped. So it's not like you watch a live broadcast and then it goes off and then it archives and then you can watch a VOD immediately of it. It's, it doesn't really run like that. So the way that stardom shows are run is stardom will, let's let's take the, the most recent show, which was the May 16th Cork and Hall show. Let's take that show and then I'll explain how it kind of works. So on May 16th in Japan, they run the show. They just run it, they record it, they have it. The show does not go live all at once. They do not just pump the show out. One of my favorite things that Stardom does is they take the promos from the show. So let's say, like I said, the May 16th show, and they'll take the promos from the show and they'll translate them to English and subtitle them so you actually know what's going on. This, of course, takes time. So they can't just upload everything right away. They're still a very small group with very little employees and they do things at their own pace. So don't expect to wake up on May 17th or whatever the case may be and expect the whole show to be up. Recently, they've been kind of quick on getting things up. As I'm talking right now, I think they have like four matches from the May 16th show up out of six, and they already got the main event up, which was the big show or big match for the show. So that's pretty good. But essentially what they do is, is they take the entire show and then they upload each match match by match. And it could take sometimes up to a week to get the entire show finished. So it's probably a couple of reasons that Stardom takes a little bit to upload their shows. One is they run a lot of shows compared to a lot of the other Joshi promotions. Stardom easily runs the most that I've seen. Two is that they translate all the promos. So in Stardom, they do promos before every single match. They kind of explain what's going on in the match and things like that. It's very nice. It's very easy to get into. Um, but of course, they have to translate in English so people that are watching in the States can understand what's going on. And three, like I said, they're just a small promotion. There's not a lot of employees. They do things as fast as they can. So basically what I'm saying is, is do not go on their Twitter if you do not want to get spoiled. I personally do not care. I go on their Twitter as the event's happening because I want to know the results as they're happening because I'm very interested. But if you're one of those people that cannot, like you just absolutely, like if you know the results before the match happens and you cannot watch it, just don't even don't even follow their Twitter. Just don't. But one of the biggest things about Japanese promotions for people that are not Japanese is that it's very hard to get into them because you can't follow along as easily. Thankfully, Stardom is very good on that end. Like I said, everything is pretty much subtitled. If you need to know anything, it's all right there for you on the screen. It's perfect. It's great. It's very easy to get into. I promise you, you will have no problems whatsoever like the, at all now you're probably wondering where do i start where what, what do i do what do i, I have starting world i signed up for it what do i do now well like i said i'm gonna let you discover things but i'm gonna give you a starting point to where 
I think is good for you to pick up on. I'm not going to tell you to go back and watch this 2015 match or this 2017 Cinderella turn. I'm not going to tell you to do all that because I don't think that's a good way to get people into stuff. Yes, the matches are good. Yes, I could give you a ton of good matches, but I don't think that's going to get you into stardom today because the landscape is a little different than it used to be. So what I want you to do before you go back and watch all these matches, before you click on this Google sheet and you go down to the bottom and you see the recommended matches that I give you, watch these shows. The first show that I want you to start with is the April 13th Stardom show. The reason I want you to do that is because it is the day before the stardom draft so stardom has a draft that they've done for two years in a row now and basically what this draft will do is switches the factions up so people from one faction could end up in another faction and things like that it's very interesting i'm glad that they're keeping this going it's, it's really cool so i'm telling you to watch the april 13th show first all the way through just watch the entirety of the show because this kind of gives you a baseline it gives you an idea of what the factions were before the draft and it gives you an idea of who these people are and how they're going to change over the next year. So the next show I'm going to tell you to watch is the April 14th show, which is the day right after that. So you just watch the entirety of that. What that's basically going to be is the draft show itself. So it's going to be the draft. And it's also going to be the match that determines the draft, which tells you which team is going to be disbanded. And it's going to tell you, uh, you know, what's exactly going to change. I will say this as the draft is over, maybe not, maybe not exactly this show. Maybe you can watch the show afterwards too, but I, I really do recommend picking one, a favorite faction and two, a favorite wrestler, just because it's more fun that way but i would wait until after the draft because things changed a lot during the draft and then once you watch those two shows man you're pretty much good to go you can watch literally any of the other ones once you know the draft and who's on each faction this year and things like that you're good to go you can follow any of the storylines at any point now um, i think that learning the wrestlers and learning all about them will be quite an interesting experience for you it's a very colorful sincere hard-hitting promotion it's just it's really neat i mean uh, there's so many different personalities from like look at momo watanabe which is like a serious ass kicker sort of ordeal and then you go over here and you got Natsu Sumire who is like a, a basically she just antagonizes children and then you have like uh, just just this jungle Kiona which is just like this super sincere super hard on her sleeve type of wrestler and it there's just so many different things to to pick up on and I think you'll, you'll really enjoy discovering all these new things. I will say that you should probably pay attention to a lot of the people in Tokyo Cyber Squad just because it seems like since the draft show that a lot of what's going on has been pretty much surrounding that entire faction. So I think that's pretty much all you need to know to get started on Stardom is sign up for Stardom World, watch the April 13th show, the April 14th show, I told you the factions. Uh, I told you some of the, the people. I think that's pretty much all you need to know. If you want to know more, you can head down to the Google Sheet that I made, the beginner guide, and you can learn more. I have a bunch of stuff like the pronunciation of names. I have uh, entrance music and things like that. It's a lot of, it's just a lot more information that I think that you might want to know. So anyways, I hope that you guys decide to get into it, man. And I hope that your favorite wrestler is Jungle Kiona, because it should be. If you guys want to know any more, uh, of course, you can follow me on Twitter. Feel free to ask me. Come into my Discord. We have a room that's pretty much just for Japanese wrestling, and we kind of talk about joshi and stardom a lot over there so you can go over there if you want to or uh you know just ask in the comments do whatever you feel like thank you guys for watching this i hope that you enjoyed i hope this helped you a little bit more getting to stardom and kind of get the idea of what this company is all about and uh like i said i hope you guys end up enjoying it so remember leave a thumbs up if you did enjoy this video subscribe if you guys are not subscribed join the team i want you here you want to be here come on man wrestling we do it out here anyways guys have a good night see you